Hello everyone, uh, it's been ages since I updated this channel and, and unfortunately I'm not even in a plane either so I'm actually in Atlanta uh, for work uh, unfortunately I didn't fly here because the plane isn't ready what else is new? but I thought I'd just give you a little short update about what's been going on and and what's happening with the plane and stuff so the last kind of year, two years actually, to be honest, has been financially very difficult or a little bit more challenging for me. You know, I bought a house. The house needs lots of work. I started a new business that costs a lot of money up front and hasn't started generating any money yet. Um, so, you know, to then have the plane <clears throat> kind of not being ready and costing money the whole time. I have to take a little bit of a back burner on the plane in many ways. And you've uh, heard about my mechanical troubles I had, with my, or with my mechanic, rather. So, end of last year, 2018, um, I finally had had enough of shade dream mechanics and kind of mechanics who weren't doing what they were supposed to do and all that stuff. So I decided to take her to a service center um, and one of the biggest and best ones here on the West Coast is Aero Air up in Portland, Oregon. And so I think it was middle of December uh, I fared her up. So Aero Air immediately launched into um, a phase inspection which is kind of a fancier word for a annual inspection and found more stuff, of course, uh, than I'd hoped for, that the previous mechanic had not done either correctly or um, done at all, basically. So Airware's bill went from what I thought would be 30 grand uh, to 70 grand <laughs> as an estimate, uh, uh, which was a big blow, you know, to me. So then I faced a moral or rather monetary dilemma, like, do I keep this plane or do I ease my pain, sell the plane now at, you know, at a loss and, and use that money to pay all my other commitments and then maybe I can revisit buying a plane and maybe a year down the line or something. And I came to the conclusion that that was at the time the best solution. Uh, so I put the plane up uh, for sale at a reduced price, you know, telling them that, you know, you're going to have to spend about 70 grand uh, on her to get her airworthy and here's the, you know, my, here's the estimate and all that stuff. So I reduced the price with about 70 grand of what I thought it was worth. And there was a couple of interested guys and one particular guy was very interested and I met him in Miami. Um, we talked about it. He was a South American gentleman. Um, a lawyer and he had a plane, he had a Navajo, but he wanted a, a turbine, you know. And he was very interested and he would be able to finish the plane uh, in Miami with his mechanic. So, you know, I said, sure, let's do the deal. We went into escrow and about two months of escrow and he was up and looked at the plane and, you know, he was very happy. But this whole time, Inside of me, I was like, I hope he pulls out. I hope he doesn't go through with it. Because I really want to keep the plane. I, like, I've spent so much on her already. And she's so close, you know. And, you know, she has a new panel. And, and just to get a new panel these days with the ADSB uh, mandate from FAA next year, it's, it's a nightmare. You know, there's two years of waiting for the avionics shop. So all that's taken care of. She's already you know, ahead of the game in many ways. And plus I thought, you know, I'm probably never going to be able to afford this type of plane again, you know, with my financial commitment, or at least not for many, many years, you know. So I was secretly hoping he would pull out of the deal. Two months is up. We, we had a two-month escrow. And he says, I'm still interested, I wanna, but I want to extend the escrow for another two months. So that I, I can make every all the repairs I want to make for it to be ferried from Oregon to Miami. 
So I said, maybe we can extend a little bit and then, but we basically came to the conclusion to end the escrow and, and for me to keep the plane and I'll just inherit whatever repair costs he had at Aero Air for, that he'd done to the plane. So that's what we did and I was um, very, very happy about that. I felt very good about that. Uh, but it now means that I have to carry the burden of these repairs again that I was trying to get out of, you know, it was the whole reason I sold it or wanted to sell it. So now we're kind of back. They did quite a bit of work with it, uh, with the plane on his behalf and I kind of inherited that bill and it was st all the stuff that needed to be doing anyway it was on the squawk list. So now we're on a kind of a schedule tailored to my financial capabilities at this moment. So it's a little slower than I would like. I would like to be able to be do it in a month and then be done with it, but that's not going to happen. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of a pay as you go. So hopefully by December, by then it's been a year she's been at Aero Air, uh, I'll be able to pick her up and bring her down to Los Angeles. And by that point she should be in pretty good shape because Aero Air are not known to let things slide. They're very, very thorough. So when she's finally signed off from them, it'll be peace of mind for me that she is 100% airworthy and meeting all legal requirements in every way, shape, and form. And to be honest, I can't wait to get her back because it's been way too long without my aircraft. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. See you later.